So you give somebody a grain meal, wheat berries, what are you going to get? You're going to get some of the most nutritional, best tasting homemade bread you've ever ate. The welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Before we go into grinding our wheat berries, we're going to talk just a little bit about it. I'm not going to carry on and carry on about it because I think the more, the more you discuss and talk about something, either people lose interest or they get scared and they back off because it, it just gets to sounding too difficult and just too much for them to, to comprehend. And believe me, I'm that way all the time. Simple is best for me. But grinding your own wheat berries, it's, it's easy. Knowing which wheat berries, that's easy too. You just research it a little bit. Go to some of your YouTube channels. Troubleshoot it if you're having problems with your loaves and stuff. There's always avenues out there to figure this stuff out. Now, in the beginning of my um, videos, just about 99.9% .9 of them, I have the same introduction. And in that introduction, you see Mr. Brown using a hand grain meal. And we, of course, we've had it for a long time, and we still have it. And in times that, <clears throat> that maybe we have to go off grid, or the grid goes out, or for any reason, we will be able to grind wheat berries. But several years ago, I invested in electric neutral meal grain meal. And I absolutely love this thing. The only thing is it is loud, and I guess most of them are loud. But this one will, uh, it will meal quite a bit of wheat berries at a time. And it comes out, the flour is so soft. The wheat berries that I use, and I keep more of these on hand than I do any other wheat berries, and that is the hard white wheat berries and that's for making the best breads as far as I'm concerned. Now I do have the hard red wheat berries. That's a more nuttier uh, taste, more intense, but that's more of your, um, your, your loaf is going to be a little, little bit more browner, reddish color, more of like the color you would buy in the grocery store. So it's whatever your taste is. Now, there's ancient grains out there, but we're not going to go into them right now. That's a whole different video. The soft white wheat berries are more for making your cookies, your pastries, cakes, stuff like that, biscuits. And I do keep them too, but I don't keep as much of those wheat berries as I do the hard white wheat berries because we make a lot of homemade bread. Um, it's more nutritional for you because it's not been processed and um, even your flour your organic flour in the stores have been processed <coughs> and do not <coughs> have the nutrients that you're going to get out of your own home uh, milled berries so that being said we're going to get to uh, milling these berries the white the uh, hard white and making us some bread and as I'm making the bread I will discuss the steps and some of the things that I have found that's made a better loaf 
and made it easier for me to make a better loaf. We're going to start milling our berries. And this is my, uh, the hard white wheat berries. And you see the color of them. Now, I'm not going to need eight cups of milled berries for this recipe. But I'm going to go ahead and mill that much and then store the rest of it because I will be making more bread. The one thing that I don't want to do is mill a lot of this flour. If, I, if I'm not going to be using it through the week, if it's going to be stored up for months, you don't want to do that. Your wheat berries in its original form like this will last 30 plus years in a good tight container but if you say for instance you grind half of it and you don't really use that much it could go rancid on you so only grind what you think maybe you're going to use that week a couple weeks even a month and you put it in a in a good tight container but I wouldn't go over that that's for sure now the one thing about wheat berries too is um, once it's uh, milled and made into flour, it it takes a lot of liquid to hydrate it. So you'll see as we go through the recipe what I'm talking about. But I'm going to go ahead and put my berries in. This is a Nutri-Mill. And I showed you the picture of it and talked about it. And it's very loud, but it does a wonderful job. So I'm not going to make y'all listen to all this noise. So I'm going to turn this on, turn the noise off, and uh, get to grinding this. Now let's talk about um, the hydration of your fresh milled berries. Even though I had this to to grind it as as soft and as uh, <clears throat> as it could get it, it's still a heavier uh, flour because it's not like store bought flour, whether if it's organic or not. It's been processed and um, all of your bran and germ goodness that you still have in this has been processed pretty much out. And that's what makes your store vault so much lighter and fluffier. So to get this to be as soft or get close to store vault, what we're going to do is we're going to measure out three and a half cups of our milled flour. And 
and different grain mills are they uh, they will process differently so when you get a grain mill regardless of which one it is you just have to to uh, mess with it use it figure it out just like everything else so three and a half cups of our milled wheat berries and they're they're not as white as what you would buy in the store because it still has all your your bran and your germ and all that in there so I've got two and one fourth cups of hot water now it's not scalding hot it's just really hot out of the tap and I'm gonna pour this in here and I'm gonna turn this on for just enough to mix it okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this up I'm gonna cover it up with a towel and I'm gonna let it sit here for two hours and I'm gonna let this flour slowly absorb all this water because that's what it's gonna have to have it's a heavier flour so it's gonna take longer to absorb your liquid and this right here will get you a softer loaf a fresh milled flour a fresh milled flour loaf of bread so I'm gonna get a towel and cover it up and we'll be back in a couple hours okay I wanted to show y'all <coughs> my meal my grain meal this is a neutral meal um, I bought this Oh, how long has it been? Maybe three years ago, and I got it off Amazon. Of course, Nutrimill is the one that is the brand, and it's uh, the company. And but I bought mine off Amazon because that's where, I, to tell you the truth, that's where I seen it, and uh, it got really good reviews. And I went to Google and searched it, and it got good reviews. So. I thought if I'm going to spend that kind of money, I want to make sure I get a good one. So anyways, this is what I ended up with. And uh, it's heavy duty. The motor's right up in here. I'll show you just a minute the bottom of it. This right here, once it's, uh, after it's uh, grinding, it's going to feed through here and go down into the, the other part of the mill. This thing... I mean, it's a hoss when it comes to grinding. You can put, oh, there's no telling. I don't remember how many. You can fill it up, put it that way. And I can't remember how many cups fills it up. But uh, it feeds good, and it just does a good job. I'm not sorry that I spent the money on this one. Now, there's lots of different um, grain mills out there. You just have to do your research and find one that, that fits you best. Uh, I don't keep this <laughs> this one on my counter because I don't have room for it. Like I said, it's a hoss, so. But a lot of people like to buy stuff that they can put out on their counter that they've got room for. But this one goes into my walk-in pantry with all my, with all my other stuff. So, so this is the bin that fits right down in here that all your your milled flour will go into this is the top of that this right here on the bottom is what catches the flour dust if you have watched a lot of people that have them real pretty wooden um, mills up on their counter and they work really good but they have to cover it with a, a towel or something because that uh, flour dust just goes everywhere this is this got a, a rubber seal around it and I have to keep keep flour on it because it's so tight that it's it's hard sometimes to put on there well it is for me because of my hands this right here on top of the cup 
is the filter that I keep cleaned all the time that filters that that dust so you don't have all that dust coming out on you or all over your countertops so that's another reason that I like it so once you put once you put this on there and it goes on very very tight and that's the reason that you don't get all that accumulation of flower dust all over the place and then you're going to take this and it's going to go uh, wrong way Lord it's going to go right up in there now You can't just put it in there just like that. It's not going to work. You have to take it and you really have to shove it in there hard. And sometimes with my hands, I can't do it. So Danny has to do it. <clears throat> so sometimes I have to lean it backwards and really push on it. But it'll you'll know when it's in there good because you will not be able to pull it out. See, it's not in there good. So that's the only thing that I don't like about it, but this is the good thing about it being that tight. All your flour and all that dust goes only in here. It don't go all over the place. So, <clears throat> once you can get past that, it's a good grain meal. So, um, you can go to Nutrimeal online. Go to the, the main Nutrimeal company. I checked yesterday and this one right here is sold out. It's sold out on Amazon. Um, I did look. Lehman's has it. At that time they did have them. The new, this one right here and, and several other kinds that you might be interested in. They have the hand crank too. Um, I would suggest that the way that things are going, and you might find you one at a flea market, pick you up one this hand crank, whether if it's old or new. You can even buy the electric ones that also turn into hand crank. <coughs> and I think that that's what Miss Vicki from Vicki's Country Home, my sister friend, I'm pretty sure that that's the kind she has or the kind that she did have, that you can do it manually or electric so that's a good idea of course my big mixture y'all see me using that is a Nutrimeal Artiste I also got it off Amazon several years ago I don't think you can get it on there anymore but you can go online to Nutrimeal just type in Nutri Nutrimeal Artiste and it should go to the company and last time I checked they did have the mixtures but you may not want to invest all that right now. You may can just do one at a time. Um, it took me years to be able to invest in something like this, but I'm not sorry I did. You know, there's things that you invest in for your homestead, and this is just one of them because your wheat berries, like I said before, when you store them correctly, are going to last you 30 to 50 years if they're stored right. Um, fresh milled flour or store bought flour after so many years is going to go rancid. So that that's just one of the reasons that I invest in this. The main reason is for the nutritional value. Um, we don't eat bread every day, but it is, a, it is a big part of our pantry and what we eat. So you want to make it as nutritional and as good for you as you can. I'm telling you, bread, store-bought bread is full of so much preservatives and mess. And I know y'all know that. And even your, your good flour that you that I bought for many years, because that's all I could afford, the cheapest flour, off-brand flour, 
and I fed, that's when I made biscuits and bread out and, and everything because that's all I could afford. <coughs> and I've got a little bit of a cold, y'all. <clears throat> but uh, you do what you got to do. But that flour has been processed so much that the nutrients just aren't there. So anyways, that just, that just tells you why a lot of people, just like myself, invest in, in stuff like this. Now you can do save money and do a hand crank just like the old one that me and Mr. Brown have and it works good. But the thing with that is it takes several grinds and it takes a little while to get you four and a half cups of flour. But if that's all you got and you've got no other way to make you some bread, it really doesn't matter how long it takes you just as long as you're able to do it and make you some bread. Um, bread and biscuits, that will help you survive in some of the worst times. So why not do it the most nutritional way that you can and do it by having stored up wheat berries. And um, there's so many different places that you can get wheat berries. The Nutrimill site also sells wheat berries um, all you got to do is go like I said to Google search and put in uh, wheat berries or if you're wanting your your soft wheat berries your your hard white or just whatever put it in there and it's gonna come up and it's gonna show you different places that you can buy and there's a lot of them a lot of them that have all kinds of your wheat berries. You just need to research it really well. Um, I don't go out and buy the most expensive per ounce of wheat berries. I can't afford that. So I do the best I can in getting good ones, but not the most expensive. So that's just a little tip there. A lot of y'all have been using wheat berries for years, like I have. Some of y'all are just starting out. So, making bread is not hard. You just have to learn it. You just have to learn it for yourself. Kind of like making pie crust. You didn't just jump in there on your first pie crust and make the best pie crust you ever made. <clears throat> it took time to get that down pat. You can make bread. And it's going to come out eatable, but it may not be the best loaf you've ever made. But as time goes on and you keep uh, adapting to it, figuring out what you've done wrong, or maybe what you've done right, and you'll make some of the best bread. Back. Our fresh milled flour, three and a half cups and two and one-fourth cups of hot water have been sitting here. And that flour has been soaking up that liquid. And when I've done some research, this is just something that I found that does help the texture and softness of your bread. And you can see how stretchy it is already. All it is is the fresh milled flour and water. So we're going to go ahead and put our, the rest of our wet ingredients in here. So I took another fourth of a cup of warm water and I put two tablespoons of active dry yeast. Now you can use active, you can use fast acting, they say it works either way. You can see how how the yeast has uh, bloomed up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in here. Now the thing about this bread, and it's not as complicated as it sounds, it's just once you get to doing it the way you know it works for the kind of bread that you're wanting, the texture the, the rise, the, uh, the overall product, it's all a learning curve. No matter 
who you're watching or, or how you're doing it. <clears throat> so that was one fourth cup of warm water and two tablespoons of active dry yeast and it does take quite a bit of yeast. This right here is a half a cup of light olive oil. Use a neutral oil that doesn't, you know, that's not going to leave a, a big taste to your bread. You can use uh, grapeseed oil or something like that. And then also, I've got a fourth a cup of, uh, of raw honey in here. And I just put it in there with my oil. It makes it easier to, to get out. Now you can use sugar in place of the, the honey if you want to. So I have a cup of oil, olive oil, and a fourth a cup of honey. And you can see how that honey really come out of there a lot easier being mixed in there with that oil. But I still like to make sure that I get it all out. And you'll always know if you're using an oil that's going to leave a taste in your bread because you can almost smell it. A little bit of yeast left in my cup here. A measuring cup. I've got one egg, one large egg, that does help with the moisture and just gives that bread a, a really good texture. I got three teaspoons of salt. But what I want to do is I'm gonna mix this just a little bit. <coughs> And then we're going to start adding the rest of our flour. Now, we put in three and a half cups. This recipe calls for four cups. You may have to add just a little bit more to get the texture that you need with your bread. It depends on the humidity, the weather in your house, if it's warm or just whatever. Day to day, it will vary. So we're going to need another cup but we're not going to add this whole cup at once. While that's mixing, I think I'm going to turn it off. So I'm going to add a fourth. I'm not going to add my salt yet. I do have a top for this mixture. I just, I never hardly ever use it. <laughs> If you got a big bulk of something in there that the flour is just going to puff out of there, you would want to put it on there. I'm going to put another fourth of a cup. Another fourth of a cup. Now I'm watching my bread. I'm watching the texture, the stickiness. And like I said, every time you make it, it's going to depend on the weather and in your house, the, the humidity or dryness or warm or cold. Or I'm going to put that other fourth in here. We're going to see what it looks like. Now I'm also going to put three teaspoons of salt. Doesn't matter what kind of salt. For my research, I found out that uh, Himalayan pink salt really doesn't work as good as maybe just your regular sea salt or kosher salt. Now I can look at this and I can tell that it's too sticky. We did have rain last night. I'm just going to add another a lot of people uh, don't like using honey. Uh, a lot of them would rather use just regular uh, cane sugar and that's up to you what you want to use. 
Sometimes I go back and forth with it. Excuse me. I'm going to put another tablespoon. So I've already put four and a half cups plus a couple of tablespoons. Another tablespoon. I'm going to turn this off and I'm just going to touch my dough and it's sticking to my fingers so it needs just a little bit more flour. I'm going to put another tablespoon. So we may have had to <laughs> already add another fourth a cup. Today this recipe is probably going to be close to a five cup recipe just because of the weather. Now I'm wanting this to knead for about 15 minutes and it's already been kneading I don't really know I haven't timed it probably a couple minutes I'm gonna watch the clock now a lot of y'all have commented and uh, y'all just you get a little bit upset because your, your dough was just, just staying sticky well, you just add a little bit more, but just be careful that you don't add too much. Okay, this dough is starting to come together. When it starts pulling, you want to watch around the sides. When it starts pulling the dough away from the sides, you know it's enough flour. But you can see how maybe it is still sticking a little bit to the side. So we're going to add just a little bit more. I'm going to help it out just a little bit. And I can feel it and tell that the stickiness is starting to, to go away. So we have added up to five cups. And it was a four and a half cup recipe. And like I say, it just depends on your diet. So I'm going to let this continue need another 10 minutes and then we'll come back and then we'll check it. We'll see the, the elasticity in it and uh, we'll just check it, see where we're at. Now I kept coming back and, and checking my dough and you can see that it's pulled away from the side. So that means I feel like I've got plenty of flour in it. And I'm just going to stretch it, and it does have a good stretch to it. And then, <clears throat> if you put your hand in a little bit of water, stretch it, see if it's got a good thread to it. If it's not breaking on you, I mean, a little bit of a break's okay. But I can get the window pane almost through that. You can see my finger. But if you can do this, and it's not just tearing and breaking, you're good. So, now we're going to take it out of our mixer. 
Now I want to tell y'all this because I thought about it and I didn't tell y'all. When I done the two hour soak method, you don't have to do that. You can go on with the recipe and make your bread. It's still going to be good bread. If you don't do the two hour soak method with the flour and the water, you go ahead and put your, your three and a half cups of flour in there, your two and uh, a half cups of, of hot water, all your liquids, your yeast, and you stir all that up. And then after you get all that done, uh, your egg and your salt, no, don't put your salt in there yet. And then when all that's mixed up good, then you come back with that other cup, cup and a half, whatever it's going to take, and start slowly incorporating it. And as you're doing that, then add your three teaspoons of salt. And then just do like I did, the steps of just adding your flour to you know it's just not, a, you can feel it and it's not sticking to your fingers like a, a sticky mess you know that it's going to come together. Just don't put too much. But you've seen that I put from, <clears throat> from a recipe that called for, for four and a half cups of flour, I ended up putting close to five cups. And that's just the way some days will happen. I have got my recipe for uh, sweet dough that has went viral y'all and um, I can't tell you how many views it's gotten a lot my arthritic hands I can't try to get this bowl off y'all but uh, people absolutely I even have <laughs> I even had big um, bakers in these big cities that have watched that that video and that recipe and tell me that they made it and how much they absolutely love it but they know enough to know because I've done enough pastry or dough to know that if it's if your dough is looking too sticky you just add a little bit at a time till you get the consistency because I had some people saying oh my dough was just too sticky and I couldn't get it well if you just stay patient with it one day to the next is going to be different, that's for sure. Now I put just a little bit of flour out here on my board. And of course this has been kneading for quite a while. I think it kneaded for 17 minutes. This is going to make two loaves. Making sure y'all can see this. So I'm not going to mess with it a whole lot. And I forgot my bench scraper. I'm going to cut this in half. I'm just going to kind of gather this up a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit more flour on top. I'm going to kind of spread it out a little bit. And I want a rectangular shape is what I'm wanting. This dough is really easy to work with. Now you can make little mini loaves if you want to give them out as gifts with maybe some homemade jam or something like that. I'm using a nine I think it's a nine by five, nine by five uh, log pan that I have sprayed. 
I thought about using my cast iron, but I'm just not going to do it today. And you can kind of mess with it a little bit. And I'm going to take... Now if you want to, if you have got one of them long bread pans, like the Pullman or something, and you want to make like a sandwich loaf size, you can, uh, don't cut it in half and put it, I have done that. I'm going to fold that over. Oops. Wrong way. <laughs> I'm going to fold that over. And I'm just going to start rolling. And everybody wants to make this perfect, beautiful loaf of bread. It's not always going to be perfect. I'm going to tuck in the, the ends. And I'm just going to take it. And I'm just going to kind of tuck it. Pull it. Tuck it like this. It's kind of tighten that top up a little bit. Now I'm going to put it in my pan. Put it in my pan just like that. We're going to do our second loaf. Now, there's nothing hard about making bread. Like I always say, it always seems longer because we're sitting here showing y'all step by step and trying to take it slow enough that y'all y'all understand the concept. Making bread to me is very therapeutic. I know y'all have heard me say that before, but it's true. Fold over the sides. Kind of tuck it as you're rolling it. And as you get to the end, you can kind of spread it out a little bit to the ends. And then tuck your ends. And then just take it and just kind of pull it down like this. Just tighten up the, the top. Put it in your brick pan. Now I'm going to get me some plastic wrap to cover them up. Okay, I got my sprayed plastic wrap over my bread. And I'm going to go in there and put this you can put this by your wood cook stove if you have one. You've got a fire going, <clears throat> a warm place. Put it on a heating pad. Um, I have got a little countertop Emerald Lagasse oven. And it has a proofer on it. I mean, it has a, a, a... What am I trying to say here? Anyways, it has a proofer button on it, so it proofs your bread. So it, I think it gets up to like 95 degrees and then it just kind of hangs there. Anytime I've ever used that, 
my bread proofs really good. But like I said, just find you a good warm place to put it. And we're going to let these uh, rise for about one hour. If your house is cold and it don't look mm -hmm. like it's rising, give it another half an hour. Okay, our bread is done rising. <clears throat> I don't want it to do any more than this or it'll be uh, over. I really don't like it to get above the edge of my bread pan, but it'll be okay, I think. I am going to put a little bit of sweet milk over the top of my bread. The reason that I use sweet milk instead of egg it's because the bread, the milk helps keep it a softer crust. And that's what I like. But you can use a, an egg wash if you want to. But I just prefer the texture that the sweet milk gives it. Okay, my oven's ready. It's at 400 degrees. I'm going to bake this for about 20 minutes. Now I decided to use my confection oven instead of uh, my regular oven here at my cook stove. And we don't really have a big fire going in the wood cook stove today because we'd burn up. So confection oven it is. Okay, I'll check it in about 20 minutes. Now, the thing about um, fresh milled wheat, for some reason, the top will get darker than what your store-bought flour does. So it can fool you, and you'll think that it's, it's done when it's not. So I like to use a thermometer, and it should be at least 200 degrees inside to be done. So we'll check it in about 20 minutes. Okay, we're going to check my bread. The top was getting a little bit brown. <laughs> I'll tell you, it'll make a liar out of you every time. Now, I think I may have <coughs> overproofed my bread this time. Because it, you can see it's flat on top, which is fine to me. I'm using this for sandwich bread. But it don't have the dome shape on top. So, but I'm going to put it over here and let it cool. I mean, that does happen sometimes. Sometimes my bread will come out just as pretty on top and that dome shape and everything's just perfect. Sometimes it don't. But, it's still good bread. So there's our second loaf. I tested it and it was... Um, getting on up there 200 degrees so taking them out we're going to let them cool off and uh, then we'll cut into them we'll see the texture and then we'll taste them too so we'll be back in just a little bit so if you've never milled your own wheat berries and you want to try it I hope you do. I hope you jump right into it because once you get started and once you 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 know you've you got it maybe not down pat but just good enough to make your family some wonderful nutritional bread that still got its nutrients. You won't go back. I guarantee you you'll love it. So just do your research, go online find you the the grain meal that you want find you some wheat berries they're everywhere just search for it I will put some links below but you know like I say just do your research because a lot of times you can find better prices at, at different companies and you need to uh, not all the berries that I purchase are organic um, the price per ounce is just sometimes way over what I can spend. 
because I buy it in big bulks. I've got enough wheat berries to get me through <laughs> many, many, many years. So if anything happens, I can still make bread. I can make biscuits. I can use my uh, my my hard white uh, berries to make pretty much anything. But like I said, this the uh, the soft white berries are the best for cookies and pastries and stuff like that, even biscuits. But I can make biscuits out of this flour right here. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. M make you some bread. Um, just do the best you can because once you get started, I don't think you'll ever stop. So God bless everybody. We'll see y'all in a few days. I'm a little bit late getting a video out this week. It's been a busy week. A um, few hurdles that we've had to jump over. <laughs> but we always make it in the end. So we'll see y'all in a couple of days. And I'm hoping to get some Canon videos out. So y'all have a wonderful weekend. A wonderful week next week. Springs are coming. And I can't wait. We love y'all. God loves you. God bless everybody.